y'all, it's Kim, and today we are going to make a batch of deviled eggs. I'm going to make enough to fill my container. I've got 20 slots. That means I need 10 eggs, but I'm going to do a dozen, and I'm going to cook them in my Instant Pot. In my Instant Pot, I already have a cup of water along with the trivet that came with the Instant Pot. And I am just going to pile all these eggs on top of the trivet inside. They are cold straight from the refrigerator. And I just bought these yesterday. Before I use the Instant Pot, I would always make sure to buy them ahead so that, they, so that I could have them for a couple of weeks so that they would peel easy. But the Instant Pot makes it so easy to peel that I don't need to do that anymore. So I'm just going to put all these in here. And there we go. So let's see here if I can get a shot of that. So I've, I've just got all 12 eggs down there in the Instant Pot. These are medium eggs because that's what they had a good sale on at my grocery store and I'm going to do I found in my area or I don't know if it has to do with where I live or the way I do my eggs but I have found it works best for me to do the three four five method on boiled eggs so what I do is set set it on manual I'm going to set it down to three minutes and then when that time ticks down then I will let it do a natural release for four minutes and then I'll pull it out and put it in an ice bath for five minutes all right, so I've got that set, and it will just come to pressure. I'm going to turn this so that when it when I release the steam, it won't shoot up on the cabinets. Okay, I'll be back in a little bit. All right, the three minutes has ticked down. Now we've got to wait for four minutes to tick up, so I'll be back here in just a minute. All right, there's four minutes. Going to release the steam. Be back in a minute. Okay, the steam has released. We're going to take the lid off. And I'm going to transfer the eggs into my big bowl of ice water that I've got. So I'm just going to grab them and drop them in. And once I get all these dropped into the ice water, I will then set my kitchen timer for five minutes, let them sit in the ice water, and then I will come back and show you how easy it is to peel these eggs. All right, let that sit five minutes. All right, it's been five minutes. So we're going to crack these eggs and get the shells off. They'll just come off so easily. Put them in this. Look at that. It's just peeling off. Peeling right off. And I'm going to drop it back in there. We'll do another one. It just comes right off. All right, I'll finish peeling the rest of these eggs and be right back. All of the eggs are shelled and I've got them on a plate that's got paper towel on it to get the wetness from my water off. Let's cut one in half. Let's 
So that's a perfect egg yolk. We don't have any kind of dark ring around it. So it works out perfectly for me. So just pop it into the bowl. See, it's perfectly boiled right all the way through to the middle. So I'm going to continue to cut these in half and pop the yolks into my bowl. And I'll be back in a minute. Now I've got all of my egg whites in the container that I'm going to store these in. So those are all ready for the yolk portion. Now I still have two boiled eggs left. One is going to be for a snack, but this one I'm going to grate with my grater and with the yolks. And I did decide to change to a green bowl because the yellow bowl was not going to show my yolk mixture very good. But I'm putting this in. I always grate at least one whole boiled egg into my yolk mixture. It helps to stretch it a bit. You can't tell that there is a whole boiled egg in the yellows. So we just we're just going to grate this on this really fine microplane grater. Just the whole thing. And get it all off the back. Okay. So there's that. I'll grate it up. Now I'm going to add my standard items that I put in my devil bags. I've now gathered all of my ingredients that I need to make deviled eggs. This is mostly my grandmother's recipe. So I'm going to use the mayonnaise, a little bit of mayonnaise, a little bit of yellow mustard, and a little bit of pickle relish. My nana always used sweet pickle relish, but since I'm trying to make a keto version of her deviled eggs, I'm using the dill pickle relish. And I'm going to add a little bit of stevia to make it sweet like hers was. And then I'm going to just add a little bit of soul food seasoning salt. So we're just going to add a few of these in a little bit at a time. You never, it's never really been a measurement because it depends on how many, how many eggs you're doing. But I always put just a little bit at a time, stir it up and see the consistency and I can add more. If I need more. Once you've put these in, the egg yolks, you can't take it back out. So that was probably, I don't think that was quite two tablespoons. Now let's put this in. And just that might have been two teaspoons of the pickle relish. Now I'm not going to put this whole envelope in. I'm going to sprinkle some, probably about half of the packet, and then sprinkle some of my seasoning salt. And now I'm just going to stir this up with a fork, mashing the yolks as I go. So let me get this stirred up, and I'll be right back. Alright, this is a little dry, so that means I need more mayonnaise. So let me get my little mayonnaise butter knife out. I'm going to drop two more little amounts in here. All right. Let me stir that around and see if that enough. Okay. I think 
that's going to be enough right there. And that's, that's more creamy. That's the consistency I want. Creamy like that. Let me get a fork and let me taste it now. You don't know if you've got enough of the seasoned salt or the pickle relish or the mustard until you taste it. You can tell the mayonnaise by sight, but everything else you need to taste it. I believe it needs a little more pickle relish. So we'll drop a little bit more in. Let me stir that around. All right. Well, I need another fork. Okay. Okay, that's it. So it's just, it's just according to taste, how much of whatever all of these items are. I only used half of that packet of stevia. Just enough so that it makes the dill pickle relish taste more like sweet pickle relish. Which is how we've always done it in our family. Okay, hold on just a minute and I'll show you what I do next. We're getting close to filling our egg whites. So I'm stirring it up with my little spatula here, making sure it's all well mixed. Looks good. Now I'm going to take this and put this down in a zipper bag. Putting it all into one corner, trying to get as much of it into that corner. which once I get it in there, I can squeeze it all to the corner. So let me get it all out. And then I use the side of the bag and scrape it off of my spatula. All right. Now we're just gonna squish this all down into the corner. And I'm gonna pull back a little bit, make sure it's not all the way in the corner. I wanna leave about that much of the corner clear of filling. So let me seal this up. Do you have this problem? Sometimes it just doesn't want to act right. You don't feel it click. Okay, there it goes. Okay. All right. Now I have me a little popping bag. So I always used to hate filling. I used to do it like my grandmother did. She would just take a spoon and and put the spoonful into each egg white. But this is so much quicker and easier to me and then I have I just have a little bit of usually a little bit left over and we can either put that in a little leftover container and eat it kind of like egg salad or if there's not enough, we can just toss it. Well, let me get my scissors. Okay. So I'm just going to cut off that tip right there. And we're going to squeeze. So let me see if I can show it better here. Oops. Sometimes the little pickle relish wants to clog the opening, but you just give it a good squeeze and it'll come on out. And this is how I like to fill them. Makes it so easy. Oops, that one wants to slip because I'm holding it at an angle.
All right, just a little bit left. And let's see, I could, I could give that one a little bit more. I can always go back and add a little bit more to any ones that I think might have gotten shortchanged. You always want to make sure you have enough to go around to all the eggs, and you can always go back and add more filling. So I do believe that's it. Not much left in there. Okay, my Nana always sprinkled just a little bit of paprika on top. Didn't really change the flavor at all. It just is mostly, I think, she just did it to be pretty for decoration. So I'm just going to sprinkle them on top, just like my Nana did. Just a little bit on each one. And there we have it. Let's see if it'll show up good. Okay. Here's my container of deviled eggs. Almost just like my Nana used to make. They are keto friendly. And nice and easy to do, especially with that Instant Pot. It makes those eggs so much easier to peel. Well, there you have it. My Nana's deviled eggs with a slight alteration to make them keto-friendly. See y'all later.